YouTube, and welcome to another Doctor Who product review. Today, I'm finally taking a look at my Big Shoe Studios 1-6 skirt length Doctor from Series 7B figure. Ah, oh, that's a mouthful to say, but this is one that I've had for quite a while. I've had it literally since March, and due to exams, I've never got around to reviewing it, and now it's finally summer. I finally can give it attention and review it for you all. Some of you will know that I already have this if you follow me on social media, but this is one that I've been wanting to review for a very long time. I've had my eyes on it for quite a while, because it's not necessarily the most newest of Big Shoe figures. I do believe it's been out for about two years now. Don't quote me on that, though. But this is one when I seen that it was reduced for only £129 in a spring sale back in March. I just had to buy it because I knew that I was going to be buying one at some point and this was one that was definitely the one that I wanted. As with all Big Chief figures, of course, it does come with the same shipping box. As of normal, it protects the figure really nicely. It's just a corrugated box really with Big Chief at the bottom of the Alanth Doctor there. Very nice, it protects the figure and I really like Big Chief shipping. It's very reliable. So this is the box that we're more interested in. The box itself that it's used, as always, really nicely designed. As you can see, we have the diamond effect at the front as with the old products. And then we have the silver embossed Doctor Who logo there that looks very nice. And then at the bottom of the Alanth Doctor 2011 to 2013. And then we have the title of the set at the bottom saying limited edition one six scale figure collector series, which is great. And then at the sides of the box, which I do really like, we have a really nice image of Matt Smith there, once again, very high quality with the Doxu logo, once again, embossed. And then we have the same for the opposite side there, once again, some of the promotional images from Series 7. Taking a look on the inside, you have this really nice image of the TARDIS, as you can see, which once again doubles up as the bag drop, as with the majority of Big Chief figures, once again, it looks brilliant. And taking a look at the actual figure, as you can see, we have the window at the bottom of the title of the set, once again. Towards the side of the box, you have a few of the promotional images that are seen on the Big Chief Studios website, along with the specifications at the bottom there. And then at the opposite side once again we have the same thing repeated once again along with the accessories printed at the bottom the top of the box just has the doctor logo along with the title of the set once again and then the bottom of the set has all the company information including all the people that worked on the set along with this is not available for under 14 year olds things like that and then we have the limited edition sticker as this isn't a special one it doesn't come with a plaque it just has the number at the bottom as you can see mine is 756 out of a thousand opening the box now as always the big chief figure comes within two trays First tray contains the figure and the majority of its accessories, but note there is actually a place for the regenerated 12th Doctor head that doesn't come with this as it wasn't pre-ordered. And then at the back we just have the diamond design once again. And then the second tray includes a swappable headpiece, the fez, and as always the base along with the piece there and the tripod. And then we also have a few of the spare pieces rattling around in the bottom there, including the buttons and the joints. And then also with this figure, we get the Certificate of Authenticity. Nothing too special. It's in a bit of a cling film wrap, as you can see there with the title of the set. And then a the bit of information on the back. I just wanted to include that now because I know that I don't later on in the video. Here is the Alanth Doctor out of his box. And the first thing to say, of course, is the bloody given thing. It's Big Chief. It is brilliant, like any other high-end product, because this is probably the most high-end that I ever go on my channel, and most likely will ever will. Of course, these products are a much different market to the other figures and things that I review, and quite frankly, for the price, you do definitely get your money's worth, because these products are so high quality, down to the tailoring of the costume, the detail on the head, the paint application, all the different sculpting, even down to the accessories that come with it. I've not got one Big Chief product yet, even the Adipose, that I am not mildly disappointed in. Quite frankly, all of them are brilliant, they have something to offer, and this one is no exception. So first off, taking a closer look at the body, I'm going to start with the tail ring of the clothes first and then go into the head a little bit later. As you can see, much like any other Big Chief figure, each individual piece of clothing has been tailored down to some form of material that looks a little bit like what is seen in the show. I don't believe it is exactly what's seen in the show, as for example, this is probably a cheaper counterpart, things like that, because it'll be pretty hard to make a waistcoat this small with the actual material as seen in the show. But yeah, as you can see, it's been done very well, much like any other Big Chief once again. I really like the way they've actually improved. I think there's something with this costume not necessarily the coat, but definitely the shirt underneath. Definitely shows that Big Chief has improved from their original version, even though their original was actually really good anyway. This one is much more tighter and much more skin tight to the actual body and therefore a lot more believable for the scale. Starting off, we have the blue shirt at the bottom. This is a nice pale blue colour, but as you can see in sort of a different light there, we have sort of this light blue pen stripe in there as well, which has been really well done. I do believe that's actually white. I don't quite know. But yeah, we have down the middle as well, the buttons, which have been really nicely done there. Those have sort of been glued on, I do believe, or even stitched. You can't really tell. But if you just pull back slightly, you do also have the real buttons underneath that keep it connected together, along with the stitching on either side, which has been done so well for the scale. On our stitching up there, and then we also have the collar as well. This has been done quite nicely also for the scale. It is 
is a little bit messy, but for the scale, it's brilliant because it is pretty small. But as you can see, that's been tailored pretty well. It's sort of sculpted to go down there. Well, not sculpted, but stitched to go down as so. But then we have the bow tie as well. This is a separate piece that is actually removable, as you can see. It's on a sort of elastic band piece, which I'll come on to a little bit later because there is, in fact, a swappable version for this, but I've never actually done it. But as you can see, the bow tie has been really nicely done. It's made out of this really nice material. It's sort of like a light bluey color of the really nice white polka dot on there. And that sits rather well, actually. It hides off the little divide between the shirt, which is good. But yeah, that sits rather naturally, rather well. Of course, the shirt does, in fact, go on under the body. And we do also have the braces here, which I just love. These are, in fact, real. They do, in fact, hold up the trousers. We've got these little clasps there and also a little buckle as so. But if you also pull back the waistcoat, we also have the little tiny braces actually connecting around the back as well. And then if you go to the very back of the figure, you also have that repeated once again, removing up the waistcoat. You have the braces that once again actually hide underneath the shirt, once again connecting to the back there, which is just a brilliant attention to detail. Once again, something that you won't necessarily see if you actually keep the waistcoat and the coat on, but it's nice that they included it anywhere waistcoat above this now this has been done in this really nice purpley color as you can see it's been really well done actually i don't know quite know what it's made of in the show itself but i do believe that this is quite a good representation of what it's like i have some white padding under there which once again i don't know if that's relevant to what's seen in the show i'm guessing it is because they do tend to be pretty screen accurate these but yeah as you can see it's been really nicely done i really like the texture of this once again looks very believable to what's seen in the show and then along with this we do have two pockets on this side as you can see that does in fact work so does this one then we also have the pocket at this side as well and then down the middle we of course get some buttons much like the shirt above these have actually been glued on i do believe or stitched can't really tell for the size and then of course much like the shirt just revealing back there we do in fact have the actual buttons that keep it together because these ones aren't in fact buttons they're just sort of fake ones and this is in fact a real chain that is connected as you can see to the button there you have this really nice sort of separate dongly thing i don't quite know what that is i'm guessing it's a pocket watch of some sort but of course that has no detailing on or it might just be a weird dongly thing but that's been done rather well you have a black piece at the back there and then sort of a silvery thing at the front maybe a clock face i don't quite know but but the chain has been done pretty well as you can see it's connected rather nicely dangles down brilliantly naturally because that connects into each individual pocket and as i previously mentioned this does in fact come undone which means like with a little bit of movement as you can see there these do in fact come out to come down like this which is how it's actually shown in the packaging but yeah that is okay some people don't like that but of course they can't actually have them connected to the pockets because this is openable so if you wanted to open the waistcoat you physically couldn't actually take it off completely without sort of wrecking the chain so yeah they needed to do that i guess there wasn't really any other way they could do it even clips it's way too small for this type of figure but yeah it's still nice one thing that i do recommend though is if you want to get it in quite far you can sort of push it into there and then i normally use a sonic screwdriver actually to um sort of bop it in which um sort of works to an extent and it does sort of stay in if you have it on display they don't really tend to fall out it's just when you sort of move it about which is okay i guess Moving to the back of the waistcoat now by taking off the coat slightly, or well not taking off, but just rolling it up. As you can see, the waistcoat carries on with the purple, and then much like any other waistcoat would, it you have the black which continues on from the purple to here. And as you can see, even though if you keep the coat on, this is normally hidden, we do have this really nice buckle that's been really well done. We have this belt there with the buckle piece, which does in fact work once again, along with a few stitching lines down the spine there, which once again, a brilliant attention to detail, which is something if you keep the coat on, you won't necessarily see. So moving on to the purple overcoat now, I think that this has also been done pretty well once again replicating what is seen in the show quite well i can remember when we first seen the images of this people sort of did debate over what the color in fact was but you know a few people think that it's a little bit too baggy and i do sort of agree to an extent especially when this bit is so tight as i previously said earlier but to be fair for an extent as it is such a small figure for the actual scale really it's one six scale and the body does in fact move in multiple places meaning that the coat does in fact also need to move really and if it was in fact as skin tight as, as it is in the show then it would probably hinder the articulation quite a lot so i am sort of respecting what Big Chief did there to make it a little bit more baggy. I don't think that it's bad or anything. As you can see, it fits in really well, I think, and it's not really too baggy to an extent. I believe it's just sort of at the top where the shoulder pads look a little bit too big, but I think that that's a reoccurring theme for the majority of the Big Chief figures, at least the ones that I have anywhere. You can see we have the detailing there of the lapels at the top. These have been done really well, once again, stitched into place, so they don't really move too much, which is nice. I like the addition there of three little lines that have been stitched in to make it look like the lines of the buttons. That's been done really well. And then at the opposite side, we have the exact same thing once again. The right hand side of the figure we also get a pocket up here as well which has been really nicely done i don't know if that's real or not let's check but yeah the sonic yep that i do believe is a little bit real but yeah we can sort of balance something in there it doesn't really go down too far well, the general pattern of the coat is really nice once again it's quite a hard material to replicate in this scale but you can see we have sort of this dark polka dotish effect in different lighting you can sort of see up to the top there we also have this stippled effect which has been really well done once again a very nice material we have all the stitching down the sides here definitely more so towards the back as you can see in all different places even down the sides of the arm there 
there, down the waist, and then we have the lines down there, and then we also have the spine piece once again, much like how we did on the waistcoat, and then towards the bottom we have even more stitching and pleating lines to sort of replicate this baggy effect which can be seen in the actual show once again. We have this separate line down the middle here which does in fact divide the coat which once again reveals the lining inside which I'll come into in a little bit. Once again much like the Peter coat in a way but I really like the way that that's been done you could sort of do some dramatic photo shoots of the waving coat with that so once again I do like the way that that's been done. The arms have also been replicated really nicely as I previously said we have the stitching line going all the way down the back there and then we also have the addition of four black buttons which have been done really well there once again I don't know if those have been glued or stitched on can't really tell and then what is also really nice to see is we have the cuffs of the previously looked at shirt underneath there once again blue with sort of the white lining on but I really like the way that they've actually put buttons on that and the little clasp towards the opposite side as well please note though that if you do take the coat off then it probably won't have these cuffs at the bottom and it is sometimes a little bit awkward to do Moving on to the inside of the coat, now once again this has been really well done, it reminds me a bit of the Peter Capaldi coat from the Series 7 Festival exclusive figure, but as you can see, once again really well done, it's sort of this velvety style of lining, it's probably not actually velvet, but yeah that's been done rather nicely, a really nice shade of purple actually, contrasts really well with the waist coat, we have multiple pockets on this side, we in fact have two on each side, we have the smaller one up here, which is famously normally used to have the sonnet screwdriver in there, which can in fact be used once again, all these pockets are real, which is what I love, and then down here we have this massive pocket there, which I can in fact fit my whole finger in pretty much and wave it around a bit so we do in fact have a massive amount of space there along with power rail on the opposite side as well we have another pocket here which you can once again fit quite a lot and so you could probably fit all of the accessories that are actually with this figure once again if you do in fact move back the arms and then pull back the coat entirely you can of course reveal the rest of the shirt under there and have the coat actually off and sort of replicate something as seen in the journey to the center of the TARDIS so if you choose to do that then that's quite cool I do know that it looks quite nice there is actually a few promotional images of it like that I've not done it yet because quite frankly I'm scared that the cuffs at the bottom of the coat won't remain where they are because sometimes they don't especially on the 12th Doctor figure and then at the very top of the coat once again we have this really nice collar effect which is probably a completely different material as into the rest of the coat but as you can see it's more of like a light brownie colour very nicely textured once again it looks brilliant I love it I think that it's once again something in the show that I actually really liked as well I thought that it made the coat stand out quite a lot but one the collar does in fact of course stretch all the way back to the rest of the coat as well which sets it off really well moving on from the body to the trousers now these are in fact black so really the detail doesn't really come out too well but there isn't really too much detailing on them anywhere these can be done very nicely I don't know what these are in the show I don't know if they're sort of just jeans or anything like that and but yeah they've been done really well once again replicating what is seen in the show very nicely Moving back to the waist cut there, we in fact have all the detailing that jeans would normally have, including the little loopholes that do in fact actually work for a belt to go through, which I just think is astonishing for the size, it's brilliant. And then we also have the pockets as well. Once again, these do in fact work, I think that one does as well as that one, but they've been stitched as they would work anywhere. And then we also have these little sort of stipply bits of plastic there to represent sort of the nut things that are as seen on jeans, I don't really know what they're called. And I have the little buttons as well, which have been really well done. We sort of have the middle button, which once again, nicely done. Then of course, we have the repetition of the same detailing as the opposite side there flies of the trousers have once again been stitched really nicely this is in fact done with a zip or anything like that we do have velcro there attaching it all together so once again these are in fact removable if you wanted to do that for some reason which would be a bit weird but yeah moving on and then at the very back of the trousers once again we have the same detailing that you would expect on a normal pair of trousers you have the belt buckly stuff once again as you can see we have the buckles which i went on to a little bit earlier the braces we have another buckle piece which i love that's actually made of metal which is once again another belt piece and then we have all the stitching you would normally see in including sort of the lines there, the stitching down the crotch piece. And then we also have the pockets as well, which can be done really well. Once again, those are in fact real, so you could put something in there if you wanted to. And what I really like is you have the buttons once again repeating straight away. And then we have the white stitching lines on either side, once again replicating what's seen in the show pretty well. Other than that, the trousers are made out of this really nice material, which when you actually move the legs actually move really nicely. They crease in places as well, like such as the thighs when you move it in different areas, which I think is a benefit of using actual material as it creates this really nice sort of effect, which actually makes it look like real creasing. But yeah, other than that, on the trousers, we have a stitching line down the middle, and that's really it. At the very bottom of the trouser leg, we sort of get this overhang piece. Don't quite know what that is, but yeah, that's been done very well. It's sort of like this loop piece, a bit of tubing, maybe a roll up. I don't know what it is, but yeah. And then just underneath that, we of course have the socks, once again those are in fact socks they're just sort of made to look like they would be but the material has been attached to the leg really well and once again the same is for the opposite side as well because hey legs are the same obviously moving on to the shoes now i don't know what it is with big chief but they bloody love getting shoes right don't they these have been done really well as you can see off all this different stitching pattern on there are of course made out of sort of rubbery plastic they'll be done brilliantly they look like real shoes but as you can see you have this brand stitching down the middle there with a line of lacing and things some actually tied at the bottom they have sort of this dangly overhang there 
there as well, along with a bit of stitching, which is great to see. And then the sides of the shoe, you have this light brown effect, which has been done very nicely, along with some creasing around the ankle area. Once again, making them look very natural. And then at the bottom, you have more stitching and things. Once again, this very nice stippled effect. They look a little bit like the 12th Doctor's shoes, actually, come to think of it, but less of sort of a boot shape. But yeah, those have been done very well. And then, of course, at the very bottom, we have the black sole, which once again has been done very nicely, along with the nice sole piece at the bottom there, keeping it upright. And then at the very bottom of the shoe, we don't really have anything except the black, which once again, no scuff marks or anything on them, except sort of a light stippled effect. And this is the part of the review where you normally get really uncomfortably close to Matt Smith's face. So I do apologise if you're watching this on a large screen, because if you're seeing this on a TV, it's probably pretty scary. But yeah, once again, much like any other big chief figure, it looks bloody brilliant, doesn't it? I think this is a major step up compared to the original one that they released quite a few years ago now. But once again, the paint is just stunning on it, isn't it? It's bloody brilliant the way that they've done it. Once again, very, very lifelike. I think it looks much like Matt Smith. I know a few people think the nose is a little bit wrong. Personally, I think it looks great. I think they've done it really well. I think the eyebrows are great as well because Matt Smith does have really awkward eyebrows. I think they're sort of quite a lighty colour, but as you can see, those have been done rather well once again. I think the eyes are stunning. The eyes are probably my favourite part of these figures. The way that they've done them has been very well done. As you can see, I have this really nice glazed effect on the eyes with the really nice detailing of everything you would expect, the iris and everything like that, the brown eyes. I mean, you even have a little bit of sort of red around the outsides to really make them look quite wet and damp and sort of flesh-like, which is a little bit disturbing at the same time. But yeah, as you can see, down to the extent of even having a few creases around the eyes, it looks brilliant. And then we have all these different stippled effects around the mouth there, including sort of a little bit of a faint stubble, I guess, around the mouth and chin, which has been done very well, along with a bit of stubbly sort of effect there. Not really too much of a prominent stubble, it's just sort of quite a faint one. Even down to some stippling around the cheekbones and things, which again, they've been done really well. And then we even have the nose, which has been done nicely as well, along with a few creases around the face. The mouth is once again worryingly lifelike. Looking onto the sides of the face, once again, we have a few more lines up there around sort of the cheekbones and things, which I think have been done very well. Then we have the ears once again, which have been done very nicely. You have even different shading of paint in there and things like that, which would be done very well. We have a few lines down there, sort of some sculpting lines that have been hidden rather nicely. And then to the extent as well, even on the forehead, we have a few sort of creasing lines, which is great to see once again, with some faint paint lines. Honestly, I'm very intrigued to how they get this such intricate detail. I think the people that paint these are incredibly talented. I would love to know how they do it so intricately. But yeah, and then around once again, the sides of the face, you get the sideburns, which would be done really well. And then we, of course, have the opposite ear as well. And now, once again, this has been done really well. I really like this sort of comeback effect on the side there by the sideburns. I think that's been done brilliantly. And then sort of the quiffy piece at the top has been done really well. Also, we have sort of the flick back effect, which is once again, it's actually sort of a PVC. So as you can see, the front bit here is a little bit flexible. But yeah, that's been done very well. Of all these different cutbacks in the hair, as you can see, and all these different flecks of paint and things, I think that the shading has been done very well. That mixture between light and brown paints and sort of a bit of sort of a yellowy beachy colour in there as well to bring out a few of the light effects. I think it looks great the way that they've done that once again. Very, very talented people. And then towards the side as well, under there, we have a few more flecks and things. I think that it looks very naturally. I think it sits very naturally on the face. Towards the back of the head now, we get even more of that same design there of the different shades of brown, which would be done very, very well. I've sort of a few white marks in there. I don't quite know if that's actually meant to be a part of the figure or if that was just some packaging error that I've not noticed for the several months that I've actually owned this figure. The way that, that looks very natural, I think it's brilliantly done. And then, of course, towards the bottom, you have the hair that naturally sits on there, which I think, once again, looks brilliant. You know how I was saying how it's very uncomfortably close to Matt Smith's face? Well, it's now about to get a little bit more creepier because you can rip off his skull. That's fun, isn't it? But yeah, this is basically a magnetic piece, and I'll come to its main feature in a second. But this is the standard hair piece, as you can see. It's got nothing in the middle except a little magnet there that keeps it attached to the head. But once again, just giving a bit of a closer look there at the back of the headpiece. But more importantly, the really weird skull Matt Smith. But yeah, this had been done so well. I love the way that the quiff actually hides the connection point. Once again, you couldn't really tell that that was in fact a separate piece entirely. But as you can see, nothing to see here, just a head that you're not meant to see. But yeah, and a magnet there, along with a few paint scuff marks, which I was a little bit worried about to start with. But it turns out that once you have that on, it actually covers it entirely. So that's good. But yeah, we've got our really savage and disturbing looking Matt Smith. We can now put this cap on instead. And now he looks like a weird monk. As you can see, this is sort of a new headpiece. We have once again a bit of a connection point there. I think that it's sort of a little bit more obvious on this one. But once again, the same paint detailing once again and a few little marks and things around there. It's connected so well to the actual head. But why the hell would you want to do this, do you ask? Well, we can put this on a fez, can't we? Of course we can. And now we have the 11th Doctor, as he's seen in the Bells of St. John. 
wearing his fez. How brilliant does that look? I love this feature. I think that the fez sits so well naturally as well on the head. I love the way it sort of tucks behind the ears a little bit as well. So again, what I also love is the way that this piece is actually connected to the head, the main quiffy piece at the front. But what I love is when you put the fez on, the hair actually flicks back onto the fez itself, making it look very natural, much like the fez is actually sat into his head and the hair is sort of sticking out. So once again, that is a good sort of sculpt because it makes it look natural on the other head as well. So once again, it's sort of got a two-in-one job there. So before we take a look at the accessories, articulation, I'm not going to go through it all because quite frankly I will lose my will to live but yeah it's got a lot imagine every point of articulation possible it will most likely have it I think they have about 28 points I don't know why I can remember 28 but I think it's on the verge of 28 something like that virtually the majority of everything is a ball joint the head is a ball joint you have the waist there as well all of the stuff that you would expect in a normal figure and then a lot more 360 pivot at the wrist things like that leg articulation out 360 at the knee he can go all the way back as so like that so double joint at the knee there, bulb joint at the thing, pivot at the shoe, everything. I must set out the three that I actually have so far. This is possibly the one that I've enjoyed taking photos with the most because there's so many things and so many different poses you can do with it. It's great. So as with any other big chief figure, we get a ton of accessories from all different episodes throughout Series 7. Even if the costume doesn't really work well with that prop, if it wasn't seen in that story, they've thrown them in anywhere. I'm happy to see them because it's nice to have all these different products to display with the figure because it leads to multiple other things you can do, even with the different poses you can now display play them with these different products but as always we get a ton of different hands as usual We've seen these all before many different hands we get quite a few of the normal ones in here once again as we normally get such as the clutching ones as you can see some of which come in pairs these are sort of the holding hands where you can hold anything with them as you can see you can probably hold like the watch or something with that or the glasses maybe he's looking like sort of ominously at the glasses something like that but you get the standard holding hands as well then you get the standard um, open ones as well which normally come packaged with the figure already on but as you can see these ones give a good example of what the hands actually look like as natural and young unlike my other ones that I've had in the past that are very wrinkled as you can see once again very natural we get the detail of the nails and things in there they do look brilliant but once again those can be fitted to the figure once again the same effect as many other big chief figures the hands are very rubbery meaning that you can flex them and different things and hold different things in there as well meaning they can't really snap you could only pull them and physically snap them like that so once again it makes them very nice and a very nice material to hold things with so that's good this is one of my favorite accessories that come with the figure it's this little wooden box as you can see it's got this really nice texture along the top there very wooden effect as you can see along the sides we have all this battered effect even on the corners and things rather weathered away very nicely curved and we even have the addition of the hinges and things on there and even to the extent of having the lock on the front with a few sort of scratches and things in there this is the one from the bells of saint john as we open it and we have another bow tie inside as, as you could remember at the start of this review i did mention that we have another bow tie it does in fact get displayed in there as you could see the opening of the box we have this really nice sort of piney sort of effect in there is it pine i don't quite know i don't know my different woods but yeah once again very nice box i like the way that that's been done but on the inside we get this really nice little bow tie once again a different texture to the one as seen on the figure a different design as well i don't quite know what this one's from maybe the day of the doctor i don't know but yeah once again a nice texture this one's sort of a more lightish grayish color compared to the one actually seen on the figure as that one was sort of a dark blue with white polka dots it's a nice little elastic bit on and the only way to get this on is in fact if you remove the head from the figure and, and then put that over the top so yeah i've not done that yet and I've not probably won't do it at any time soon because I can't really see the point to. But yeah, that's a nice little thing. Display accessories, we get the fez once again. You've seen this before, but it's red and we have a little black line at the top. Not really too much to talk about generally. It's a nice little fez. But what I do really love is on the inside, even though this is a part of the head, they've added the three little things there that hold it onto the actual head. But I like the way that they've added the band on the inside as well, making it look like how it would do in the show. Once again, you can make him hold that like it's an actual fez off his head, as well as it being on his head. So once again, a really nice little fez thing there. And then with as with the majority of new series, Doctors, we get the psychic paper. Once again, this is actually a different sculpt to my other 12th Doctor one. This is a lot more flexible, as you can see. It can close. You have a white piece there, and then we sort of have a glossy material there with sort of a line through it. Very nice, sort of a pleathery effect. Once again, not really too much to talk about. We even have the little design on there, very faint that you can probably just make out on the camera. Don't we have the big friendly button from Journey to the Center of the TARDIS? Once again, it has big friendly button sort of etched and burnt into it, like sort of in a 3D effect that's actually engraved in, which is nice. Once again, a really nice metally thing. We have a few sort of little holdy grooves things there which is nice along the sort of base piece not really too much to talk about generally once again it looks like how it is in the story you could get the doctor to hold that or maybe even the sonic sort of to etch in all the different bits of text but once again a bit of engraving at the top there a nice little thing for a series 7 pacific
specific story. It'll be really well accompanied later this year with the addition of the Clara accessories. This is quite a lot of Series 7 ones with that figure as well. Moving on to other stuff, you have Amy Pond's glasses. Once again, I really like these. I like displays when he's sort of looking at the bow tie. But once again, these have been done very well. These are actually glasses, as you can see. You can see through them. Very nicely done. Have a nice little etched effect on. A bit similar to the Hartnell ones, even to the addition of having the paint to the sides there. Once again, very, very thin. I do not really like to display these on the shelves. I have a little box to keep the glasses in because they are pretty delicate. And I don't want to snap them because they are a great little thing. Once again, they'll sit onto the doctor's head really nicely. But do be warned, they do actually, once again, have delicate little edges. So if you do force them on, they will snap. So don't do that. Little things now, we also get the Doctor's Watch. This does actually tend to be displayed on the figure. This is the only time I've ever took it off for the sake of actually not forgetting it in this video. But yeah, once again, very nicely done. Very metally effect, I guess. It's not really too interesting. Just got a few engraved edges. And then we sort of have this sticker over the top of a little clock face on, which has got this really nice 3D effect over the top of this little glass piece. What you need to do is slide it on, and then it's in place as usual. Normally, it does slide down the arm a little bit, but that's not really a problem. And then you can just connect the arm over the top. And there you go. You have the 11th Doctor with his watch on. Of course, finally we've got the sonnet screwdrivers much like how we have with the 12th doctor figure i won't put it by them that these are exactly the same just a normal thing the copper with the different silvery sections on really well painted we have the black handle the white handle as well along with the open piece at the top with a very nice green emitter which has been done rather well very glossy i would actually say that was a little bit more glossy compared to the 12th doctor one then of course having the closed sonic we also have the open one as well once again the same thing really the same thing as the 12th doctor one also with the white and black handles on once again not really anything new really for me we have the claws open at the top there with the individual little spikes, which should be done really well. And once again, the really glossy emitter, which is nicely done with sort of a nice greeny paint. So once again, two really nice accessories and nice to display with the Doctor. And of course, as with any other Big Chief figure, we get the standard base as per usual. I did in fact make a mistake in my last review and commented on how the 12th Doctor didn't actually fit this base very well because you had him stood up and he didn't actually fit here and the legs didn't go directly in. But in fact, I was corrected on the Facebook group and it turns out these can in fact extend massively, as you can see. So could even have the Doctor sort of hovering in the air. So once again, my one sort of issue with the figure was in fact actually something that wasn't an issue. So that's good. But once again, just a standard base as per usual with the glossy effect in the middle. Hello me, how are you? But yeah, I've once again at the bottom there some company information. I really like the way that these have been done. Once again, if you have a ton of these, they'll look really nice on display with the other Doctors. And then of course, we do have the once again little turn on thing, which I'll come on to when I turn the lights off. There we go, transferring over into darkness. Oh, how spooky. But yeah, just in front of the camera, we have sort of the mirror piece of the actual base of the figure but once again much like any other big chief figure from the recent line turning it on as you can see we do have the 11th doctor insignia which has been really well done actually unfortunately mine does tend to be really dim actually you can't really see it because it is quite dark but in actual light it does tend to be a little bit dimmer than a normal figure but once again we have the, the 11th doctor insignia there which has been done really well with the nice gallifrey text so once again a nice little novelty thing of course much like any other big chief figure the figure sits really well within sort of the evil crotch piece of doom but yeah actually supports the figure really well once again having that piece that can actually be raised up works very nicely and once again works for the taller figures unlike how i thought with the last one so yeah great support once again so over off this figure once again big chief studios have felt to disappoint i really do enjoy collecting these because i honestly think that when you buy them you expect quality down to your accessories even the tailoring on the costume is possibly one of the best yet that i've seen and even the detailing on the head is just astonishing and it surprises me every single time that i buy one of these just how detailed it actually is of course, this is, as I say, the highest thing that I actually review on my channel, so therefore it's not based at all near the younger audience. So if you're a younger viewer and would like one of these, maybe hold off a few years, it'll probably be around still at some point, but this is definitely for the older collectors, or at least the people who actually know where to put it, where to actually keep it without damaging it, because if you do damage this, the quality will be knocked and things, and you do not want to do that. So this is definitely something for the higher collector who wants an actual proper version of Matt Smith as opposed to the less detailed figures and things like that. This if you're a fan of the 11th Doctor, this is definitely a product for you. It comes with a ton of accessories. It's, of course, his Series 7 costume as well, which is one of the favourite ones, I think, especially for me anyway. And I honestly think that it's a really great purchase. Of course, this product was actually reduced when I bought it. I believe it was £129, which, quite frankly, was an absolute bargain. That was in the spring sale, so that is over now. But I do think that has been permanently reduced on the big website to £139.99, which even then, it's about £20 off the initial recommended retail price. So even then, it is still a pretty good bargain. And of course, you could still get handles and the 12th Doctor Regenerated head to go along with it as well, if you pay separately. But as I say, overall, this figure is a brilliant collector's piece, and I highly recommend it for those people who can buy it. 
thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please do give it a big like. Please subscribe if you're not already. If any questions, please do leave them below. I'll be sure to answer them at some point in the near future. Thanks again for watching. I shall see you all next time. So thanks for watching and bye for now.